Welcome to the story of cooking. I'm Sarah Nicholas. This season we're filming in the heart of the Shenandoah Valley. I'm here at The Natural Bridge in Natural Bridge, Virginia. And now we're in the kitchen. Um, Godfrey, what you got cooking? To the berry knocker. Berry knocker. Welcome to the story of cooking. I'm Sarah Nicholas. Today we're going to be talking all about moonshine. I've created two recipes and a drink. It was not easy, trust me. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start a barbecue sauce that's made out of moonshine. It has a lot of ingredients, but trust me, in the end, it'll be great. So we're going to take a Dutch oven, put the heat on, and just start adding our ingredients. The first ingredient is a Vidalia onion. and some garlic minced up. Forgot to put a little oil in the pan. Let's do that. We're gonna let that saute in the pan for a few minutes. So Virginia and Moonshine have quite a sordid history. Moonshine and America have a sordid history. We're actually located here now in this kitchen in Southwest Virginia, which is very near Franklin County, Virginia, which at one time was known as the Moonshine Capital of the World. It's actually a perfect place to have a illegal moonshine still because there's a lot of secluded coves in the Appalachia in that area. So today, you would even probably on your hike around Franklin County might stumble into an old illegal moonshine still. I'm gonna let this go for a few minutes. My pan wasn't quite hot enough, so it's taken a little longer than I expected, but that's okay. Let that hang out there. And once that browns up, we're actually going to add our moonshine, which will actually deglaze our pan. We'll have to wait a few more minutes for that. Okay, so this looks pretty good. We're going to take our moonshine. Hold your no nostrils, because <laughs> it's strong. It smells powerful. So that is deglazing the bottom of the pan. Just like if you used wine um, or beer to deglaze anything you're making, moonshine's the same way. So all those little sucks on the bottom are being lifted off. Scrape the bottom. Then we're going to add our tomatoes, crushed tomatoes. So it is a barbecue sauce. And this is a probably unique ingredient. I never made it like this before. It has um, crushed pineapple in it. And it's gonna make a lot of barbecue sauce, which is okay because it freezes really well, so you can have it all year long. You can even use some of your garden leftovers. All right, we're gonna let this simmer for a little bit before we add our other ingredients. So this has been simmering for about 10 minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and add our other ingredients. First ingredient is molasses. And we have some Worcestershire sauce. Apple cider vinegar. Honey. <laughs> and brown sugar. A lot of ingredients, and they all go in at the same time. <laughs> horseradish. You can use already prepared horseradish. People actually think that the fresh horseradish that you grade would be stronger. If you really want that horseradish kick, prepared horseradish is, has much more horseradish flavor. And I like the kick, so that's why we added that. Um, you're also going to add dried mustard tablespoon dried mustard, and three bay leaves. Give that a stir, bring it up to a boil. So the government actually used the whiskey tax to fund the Union Army during the Civil War, and then after the Civil War they continued to allow the tax because they needed to reconstruct what had been destroyed during the Civil War. 
1894, the tax on a gallon of whiskey was $1.10, which for that time was pretty steep. So I kind of understand why people did things illegally. Not that that's right, but I understand. Very expensive. A dollar and ten cents back then was a lot. Nowadays, we have restrictions on who can actually produce moonshine, and that's good because if you don't have a license or pay your tax, you shouldn't be able to produce moonshine. But it's also for health and safety reasons. The first cup or so of moonshine that you produce is actually poisonous. So responsible people that make moonshine actually take that out and throw it away. It's got impurity, an impurity called ethanol glycol, which is actually really sweet in flavor. So the, actually the best tasting moonshine is in the first few cups, but it's also something that can kill you. So you want to make sure that you're making your moonshine responsibly, legally, and paying your taxes. All right. We are going to now add four cups of ketchup. It went up to a boil. See how much it makes a, it makes a lot of barbecue sauce. That's why I'm saying it's probably be a good idea to uh, freeze it because it would freeze very well. Stir that in. And we're going to turn it down. And that's going to cook for a good two hours. It's going to reduce a lot, it's going to thicken, and those flavors are going to really going to intensify as it cooks down. Making moonshine is actually a quite simple process. It's made from corn, normally, um, sugar, yeast, and water. That's it. Uh, sometimes um, people will use barley and rye to make moonshine as well, especially back during the Prohibition times. Bootleggers didn't have a lot of money, so they were making the moonshine to sell for a profit. They would use hog feed instead of corn, barley, or rye to make their moonshine, and apparently you can do that as well. We're going to let this go for about two hours until it gets nice and cooked down. In the meantime, I'm going to start our basil lemon punch pound cake. So I'm really excited about this next recipe. I'm actually taking my nanny's pound cake recipe and putting moonshine in it, and then after it's baked, add more moonshine. The first thing we're going to start off with are four sticks of butter. It's called a pound cake for a reason, because you have a pound of butter. All right, beat that up. Butter was a little cold. It's kind of jumping out of the pan, but that's OK. Let that go for a few minutes. So moonshine is actually, the idea of mounshine, or how to make moonshine, the process is what I'm trying to say, was brought over to America by the Ulster Scots in the 17 to 1800s. So Americans aren't even responsible for the whole process of making moonshine. All right, so to this, we're going to add our sugar. A lot of sugar, it's a pound cake, pound of sugar. that in there too. While that's working, we're going to separate our eggs. The yolks are going to go into that mixture with the butter and the sugar. And the whites we're going to use again as well. So everyone's probably seen a moonshine jug or seen a picture of a moonshine jug that has the triple X's on it. That does not mean it's poisonous. However, we learned earlier that it actually can be. It's actually how many times it's been run through a still. You have to run it through the still at least three times to get to 200 proof, which is almost 100% alcohol. The first time you run it through the still, it's only 5 to 10%. The sec second time, it's 30 to 40%. And then the third time, it's almost 100%. So moonshiners actually got their name from England. It came from the term moon rakers, who were English smugglers that worked at night by moonlight. So that's where it's believed to have come from. Get it all down in there so all the yolks are incorporated. Well, that's working. We're going to do something with these egg whites. Oh, here it is. My food processor is hiding it. Okay, so we're going to beat the egg whites. 
The term bootleggers actually came about because the people that were trying to transport moonshine sometimes carried it in a boot. So it's pretty literal how that came about. During the Al Capone era, one of the things he actually used to transport moonshine, um, he used the guise of a casket in a funeral procession, and that became a popular way to transport moonshine, because nobody would stop a funeral. Keep beating those. You're going to fold these egg whites into the egg yolk, butter, and sugar mixture. Right, almost there. Okay. That looks good. No, well, yeah, a little longer. Okay. Little soft piece. Almost there. I think I need to be a little neater about my workspace. Okay, so lift this up. Off. We're going to fold in the egg whites. And you don't have to be too gentle with this because this, this is a mystery about this recipe, but it works. I know it works because my great grandmother's been doing it forever while well, she was. But what's interesting is you beat the egg whites and then you gently fold them in. But then you add the flour back under the mixture and you beat it for five minutes. So you kind of lose the fluffiness of the egg whites by beating it again so much. But I'm sure she did it for a reason because it always comes out perfectly. Okay, mix that in. And this is where the fun begins. Guess the next ingredient, it's moonshine. Okay, moonshine. It burns the nostrils. Okay, vanilla. It's a little vanilla, sorry. And I like to add almond extract. You can add lemon extract as well, which would be nice because we have the lemon and the moonshine that we're actually going to punch the cake with at the end. Okay, we're gonna put this back. in there. And we're going to add the flour slowly. Want it at low speed or it's going to fly everywhere. Just add it in slowly. And you can also take a towel and cover the top of it so you don't get covered in white. You can really smell the almond extract actually more so than the moonshine is surprising. I need to say this because I don't want to make anybody angry in my, my family. She used brandy in hers, not moonshine, because when she was making this, moonshine was actually illegal. So I need, I need to clarify that. But it's not illegal today. Well, it is. But you can buy it legally today, so we did, we did it the legal way. All right. So much, almost too much for the food processor. All right. So that's all the ingredients before you bake the cake. So I'm going to let this mix, get it all incorporated, then I'm going to put it in a pound cake ring pan, pop it in the oven for three, at 350 for about an hour, an hour and a half, and then when we come back I will show you how to punch the cake. So we're ready to assemble our chicken. I am using chicken thighs with the skin on. Just place them in a casserole dish. They can be close together, it's fine. I'm gonna salt and pepper the outside of the chicken. Season them up. And then this is the barbecue sauce that has been cooking for two hours. You can see it's kind of all cohesive, nice and thick. We're just gonna pour that over the chicken. And this actually is not all the barbecue sauce. The amount that we made is about triple of what you see here. So that's why I'm saying it'd be a good thing to freeze. And then you can eat moonshine barbecue sauce all year long. Okay, so just cover it really, really good. So that's it. 
The next thing I'm going to do is I am going to put it in a 350 degree oven for about 30 to 40 minutes until the chicken's cooked through. All of that good moonshine barbecue sauce is absorbed into the chicken. It tastes wonderful. I'm going to do that and then when I come back we're going to make our moonshine cocktail because you can't have a moonshine show without a moonshine drink. So this drink is called a stump lifter. I'm not exactly sure how it gets its name. Maybe it's because after you drink so much moonshine you can uproot a stump. Who knows? Moonshine can make you do some pretty crazy things. It's pretty strong. So, but I did get it from somewhere. I don't know the exact origin of its name, but I did get the recipe idea from the Junior League Cookbook, North of Virginia, Norfolk, Virginia, Virginia League Cookbook. Um, but in their recipe, they did not use moonshine, they used vodka. So I substituted moonshine. It's simple ingredients, but very, very strong, so beware. The first ingredient that we're going to put in is obviously our moonshine. It is 12 ounces of moonshine. This isn't for one person to drink. This is for your whole party to drink. You don't want to drink a big tall glass of this. Or you'll wake up in a ditch and not know where you are. So, moonshine. And then you're going to add frozen uh, lemonade, frozen from concentrate. In there. And if you wanted to, you could add it more frozen and kind of let it melt and be more like a punch for a party. And the next thing we're going to add is a light beer. Any kind of light beer will do. Put that in there. So there's other names for moonshine. It's also called white lightning, a hooch, a mountain dew, the list goes on and on. Sipping whiskey. Moonshine has actually become a very trendy thing now. You find it cropping up on uh, menus all over the country, uh, especially in New York City. There's a place right down from my house. Um, it's a local bar, but they specialize in having a bunch of different uh, moonshine cocktails. Whether it's moonshine or not, I don't know, but that's what they call them. You actually, again, have to have a license and pay tax on the moonshine to, to make it. So there's not that many distilleries that actually do it legitimately. A lot of them are located in um, North Carolina, Tennessee, and Virginia. So I think I smell the chicken. It's almost done. The pound cake's done. So I'm going to get all that together. I'm going to pour myself a drink and we're going to taste everything. So we have everything ready to taste. There's a few more steps that we need to do to the cake though to make it truly the moonshine cake that it needs to be. So this is a pound cake and what we're going to do is we're going to punch the cake. And that's actually a French term. Um, the, a method that the French use called punching the cake and what you do is you just poke holes as many as you want because that's where your moonshine is going to go down into. This one's actually already naturally aerated for us so that'll help. You just punch holes all around. The more holes the more moonshine. So I'll poke a lot because it is a moonshine episode after all. Okay, so before I pour the moonshine into the cake, I need to tell you what we did to make this basil moonshine um, infusion here. We took moonshine and we added simple syrup, which is water and sugar boiled until the sugar is dissolved. So it's a sweet, the sweetness in the, um, the moonshine mixture. And then we took fresh basil leaves and lemon peels and we put it in a mason jar appropriately and we let this set for 24 hours. However, it only gets better the longer it sits. So if you can leave it sitting up to two weeks, that would be even better. And moonshine, actually I was speaking about how trendy moonshine is nowadays. The more trendy thing to do with moonshine is to infuse it with other things such as basil and lemon. Um, we here at my parents' house, we have blackberry infused moonshine, there's blueberry infused moonshine, the um, list goes on and on. You can pretty much add anything to moonshine. Okay, so we're gonna do this carefully because the easier way to do it would be to strain this so you get the you don't get the basil on the cake. But we're gonna do it this way and just pour it. Woo! Let it soak down in there. See how it goes right down into those holes. Oop! Not as easy this way. That's okay. Pour it down into the cake. There we go. 
And ideally you would let that soak up for about an hour or so, so it really, really gets down in there. And try to, I have kind of a short tool to, to punch the cake, but punch it all the way through to the bottom. This is also how you, you do like rum cake. And you can also, as a side note, punch a cake with anything too, any sort of liquor that you like. Okay. So that's ready, we'll cut that in a minute. Talk about my chicken. Our chicken, again, was cooked at 350 degrees, smothered in that moonshine barbecue sauce. You're not really gonna taste the moonshine because again, it simmered on the stove for two hours, so the alcohol and a lot of that moonshine flavor has kind of cooked out of it, but it definitely enhances the flavor of the barbecue sauce. And then we have our cocktail already served up and ready to go. So I'm gonna do this in order of this if I was eating a meal. So I'm gonna start with a little cocktail. You can really, really taste that moonshine. It, it definitely burns when it goes down your throat. So get ready, but it's really good. It has the lemon in there. A little sweetness, tartness, definitely a lot of pure moonshine kick. And then you also taste that beer in the background as well. Another thing that people get confused about moonshine is the difference between moonshine and whiskey. Essentially, it's made exactly the same way with the same ingredients. They probably don't make whiskey out of hog feed like the moonshiners did, but corn, yeast, sugar, and water. Same thing, whiskey and moonshine. However, whiskey is aged and moonshine is not. So that's the main difference between those two things. I can still feel it burning going down my throat. So I'm gonna eat something to alleviate that. This is my chicken again. I've been cooking for 30 minutes. Nice and tender. Really tender. I like that about chicken, dark meat chicken. It's always tender no matter what you do to it. You could microwave it and it would still be tender. And the moonshine barbecue sauce is very, very sweet. It had all of those smoky accents too with the Worcestershire sauce and the sweetness with the molasses and the brown sugar. It's really good. And again, it makes a lot, this recipe that I have. So freeze it, save it, and eat it all year long with your moonshine cocktail, of course. So the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna attempt to cut this cake. Plate ready. Cut a piece. And again, I would let it sit with that moonshine for a little longer than I just did, just so you really get it soaked all the way through, but it's still gonna taste good. You can see how it's already begun to soak into the pound cake. It would be good if it was soaked a little more, but that's good for today. I'll just eat off the top. I'm gonna clean off my fork here because barbecue moonshine cake probably doesn't taste good. All right. And this cake's gonna be good regardless because remember it has a pound of sugar, a pound of butter, a pound of everything. So, pound cake. You can really taste the moonshine. It, it's a strong flavor, so you gotta be ready for it. But you can also taste the lemon and the basil, which is nice, it kinda settles down the moonshine flavor and the pound cake is out of this world. Take another bite. Delicious. So, definitely recommend the cocktail and the cake for any party. It's awesome, the chicken, delicious with that moonshine barbecue sauce. Thank you for joining me today on the story of cooking. I'm Sarah Nicholas. Until next time, keep the story going.